Since becoming uh, one of the administrators or part of the administration team of uh, the Wild Orchids of the UK Facebook group, um, I've been absolutely blown away by the number of new members that have joined in the last three months alone. It's been phenomenal. We've had between 60 and 120, I think it was, was the record, new members joining us in one day. And that's been going on day after day after day, and it's phenomenal. And, and most of these people are newcomers, new to orchids, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, and I've sat there and I've watched them all coming in and posting their pictures saying, what is this, what is that? And they're using all sorts of toys to try and identify things. And you start to see that sort of, oh, I can't understand these, a lot of frustration out there. And I thought, you know, how does someone like me, some crusty old geezer who's been doing orchids for a long time, how do I help these people in some way to give them some initial help as to what are the first steps? So I'm going to have a crack with a probably a series of videos, but starting with this one, which is literally how do I take the first step here? Because it's clear that people are going one way and this way, and they're not quite sure which is best. And, you know, I'm not saying my way was the best way. It worked for me, and I want to pass it on for those uh, for whom it might also benefit. So, you know, where exactly do you start? I mean, the question that one or two are asking is, you know, are there any books out there? Do, do, you know, do I need a book? Well, my answer to the latter is yes, you need a book. You do need a book, right? A lot of people going down the route of um, apps on phones, which blow me away. How, how clever can you get a phone that can actually look at a, a flower and tell you what it is? But, you know, although I admire the technology, they're not very accurate. Um, you know, they're coming up with orchids that don't even grow in this country. And, and they're very hit and miss. I mean, let's face it, even experienced orchid fanatics uh, struggle with identification um, with some plants that are out there. So an app's got no chance at all. So my, my view with apps is they're, 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 yeah, they're clever. They're clever. It's a nice little toy, but I think there are more downsides than there are upsides to the apps. I think it doesn't encourage you to learn how to identify an orchid. You just trust it. It's a bit like... It's a bit like what sat-nav is to, to map reading. You know, they're fantastic things, but you don't develop the skills to actually read a map or even know where the hell you are. You just follow that sat-nav. If it takes you down a field or a farm track, you know, that's what sat-nav says, let's do it. So my own view is great bit of fun, but the apps are not for me. Get a book. Uh, what book? Well, the choice is simple. There's only two. Really, there is... Sean and Mike's book, The Coal and Waller. This one came out in COVID year, if I remember rightly, 2020. Uh, it was about the only good thing that happened in COVID year when we were all stuck at home, eagerly waiting for this book to come out to give us something to read and look at. Uh, fantastic book, um, Orchid Bible, simple as that. Um, but I was around before this. Uh, I was around before this book came out and my book was, my Orchid Bible was, that Simon and Anne Harrop's book, known to Orchid people as simply Harrop's, right? And Harrop's and Colin Waller, they're two books. There are no others. I mean, there are others, but these are the two that you should go for. I own both. I use both on a regular basis, and they are brilliant. They are, they are must-haves, as simple as that. If you can't afford one, put it on your Christmas list, but get one. Get at least one of these. Um, as to which one you should get, you know, uh, it's up to you. Uh, I was brought up on this um, and therefore it'll always have a special place on my bookshelf because, you know, I learned so much from this book. And it, 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 it's written in a different way. Um, it, it's, it is 2005, so it's, trying to work this out, nearly 20 years old. So it's not as up to date as the Cole and Waller book. Um, but I love the way it's written and it gives you a lot of detail but written in a way it's easy to digest, I think. It's a book you can actually sit and read as, as opposed to just using it as a reference manual. Um, Cole and Waller, because it's quite recent, uh, goes places that Harrop's doesn't go. You know, this book is the first I've ever seen to take on the task of hybrids. And there's a lot of hybrids out there and people are fascinated by them. This is the book that will take that on and show you 
what a hybrid is formed of, who the parents are, what the parents look like, what the hybrid looks like. So this really does go places that Harrop's doesn't go. But I'm still not going to go into which one is best. Uh, I'd buy them both. I really would buy them both. They're both fantastic books. You can buy them both still from Amazon. You can get them on eBay, you can get them in bookshops. Um, obviously this is recent, but Harrop's has been around a bit now. So if you're lucky, you can pick one up. Uh, for quite a cheap price second hand if you scout around looking for one and uh, surf the net looking for one you probably will find one so you know what are the sort of things in here well I mean I've marked the page here here's, here's your Colton and Waller I don't know if you can see that hybrids on the left one parent on the right the other parent in the middle the hybrid absolutely fantastic compulsive reading not maybe not for a beginner but you'll get there, you'll get to the point where you want to know what the hybrid looks like because you think you may have found one and this will help you, this will, this will give you as best guide as you're going to find anywhere as to whether it is or is it a hybrid and what it should look like. Um, what, what can I tell you about Harrop's that stands out particularly? Uh, I would say this, you know, this is a sight guide, right? This doesn't occur in Cole and Wallen. I'm sure they had good reasons not to do it. Um, and this is 20 years out of date, but so what? Uh, county by county, it will give you guidance as to where to go to look for orchids. Uh, yeah, as it may be out of date, and there may be other sites out there now, but that is fantastic, and I still use that today. I'm off on an orchid trip tomorrow, and I've used that to give me some idea of places that I'm going to drop into, and I'll tell you what sort of orchids might be there, when to go, where to park your car, etc. And I think that is just absolutely fantastic so to me that is the highlight of the Harrop's book really for me personally now is is the site guide and for Colin Waller it's the it's the hybrid guide but both of them absolute orchid bibles and I, and I just wouldn't be wouldn't be without them I'll show you one last thing I'll, I'll show you I'll show you this in in Harrop's but it's also it's also in Colin Waller in pretty much the same format it's that I know you can't read it on the screen um, that will tell you when each orchid is in flower, uh, when it's growing and when it's in flower. Uh, so it has the months across the top, the orchids down the side, when they're in flower. That is important because if you're a beginner, that is one of the most important things you need to sort of, I wouldn't say learn as in revise, but have a damn good look at that to know what should be in flower. Because if you're going off to an orchid site in July, um, this will give you an idea of what should be flowering because a lot of the posts that we see on on social media will be saying you know is this an early purple orchid uh, is this a green winged orchid you know we're in July you know those 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 orchids flowered way back in April and in May and by June they're probably pretty much gone from everywhere so you know when you don't even know what really should be out sorry excuse me when you don't really know what should be out there um, then it just makes it very complicated because you kind of assume wrongly that all 50 plus species of orchid are still out there and when you've got that in your head and you're walking around a field and you think I don't know if that's a green winged orchid or a hellebrine or you know just narrow that field down by looking at those charts which appear in both books uh, that tell you what should be in flower at any given point in time it just narrows down what can possibly be in that field you're about to walk into so it's a godsend I, I don't know how you could cope without that otherwise as I say everything could be one of uh, 53 different orchids so get a book yeah first first thing you should do is get a book as soon as you can get hold of one or other of those books buy one right you'll never regret it and it's a godsend you won't take it out in the field it's not a sort of sit down in the field next to an orchid and thumb through the book you ain't going to have time to do that but you can sit at home, look at your photographs and compare them with the book. It'll take you on from step one to step 10 in no time. So strongly recommend get a book. Um, what else can I tell you if you're at the starting point? Get a mobile phone. You've got a mobile phone. Get a smartphone. You've got a smartphone. Take it with you. Take photographs, right? I mean, I'm a, I've got all these props here. Look at this beast right Canon 1DX you know I'm a professional photographer um, I shoot weddings um, but I have a lot of gear like that top quality photographic gear I don't take that with me I don't take them with me apart from the fact they're bloody heavy uh, I don't need them 
because these things, mobile phones, will take just as good a pictures as they will if all you're going to do is put it online, right? Now, there's a lot of photographers out there jump up and down and panic and say, don't be stupid. You, know, you can't compare a Canon 1DX with a smartphone. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. In America now, there are people shooting weddings with smartphones. The cameras within particularly the top end uh, smartphones. I mean, it's just an iPhone, just an iPhone, um, Samsung Galaxy, whatever you got. You know, the cameras in there are absolutely top draw and they're made to take pictures to put online. So take photographs, right? It's part of the learning is to take, because you know, you're not gonna, as I say, you're not gonna sit in a field with a book. You're gonna see something and you're gonna think, what is that, right? Don't stress over it out in the field, enjoy it by all means, but you've got another thousand orchids to look at, take a picture. Take a picture, take it home, look at it on your phone or do what I do, download it onto your computer. You can zoom in, you can play around with it and you can get your book out and you can compare the two or you can throw it online uh, and get other people to help you. Absolutely, next to a book, it's the most important piece of equipment on your journey to understanding orchid identification. Get a smartphone, take pictures, take lots of pictures and learn from your own photography. But there's one thing. One thing that I have to mention when it comes to smartphones is learn how to use them. Right? Learn how to use your smartphone to take a picture of an orchid because, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, sometimes 50% of the photographs that come into the social media groups are out of focus. And people say, well, sorry, it's my smartphone. No, it's not. The smartphone will take brilliant pictures. It's the fact that you don't know how to use it, right? You've got to learn how to make your phone focus on the orchid as opposed to the field behind the orchid. And it's really quite easy because 90% of smartphones, all you do is you just tap on the screen where the orchid is. So you've got a, you've got a field, you've got an orchid in the middle, tap on the orchid. It's, and I'm teaching some of you to you know, do the basics and you already know, but clearly some don't, right? You've got to get that phone to focus on what you want it to focus on. So just tap on your kid and you'll see a square will come up or a circle, which just means, okay, that's what I'm going to keep in focus. You've got to learn to do that. It's got to become second nature. Otherwise, putting up blurred photographs of orchids and saying, you know, what is this? I mean, it's very difficult because it's just a blurred photograph. Um, I personally would also say getting close. Getting close, get down if you can. You know, I can get down easy. I just can't get up again. But but yeah, getting close, fill the screen with the orchid. You know, don't don't sort of stand 10 foot back and say, you know, what is this orchid? That's kind of a tiny dot in the corner of your photograph. Get in close, fill your screen, tap on the screen, take the picture, right? If you want to be really clever, take a picture of the leaves as well. If you've got some doubts about ID, then take a picture of the leaves or take a picture that's close up and a picture further back. But, you know, get in close, fill the screen with the orchid, tap on the orchid, take your photograph, move on. It's as simple as that. And you'll build up a fantastic collection over time, but you've got a great um, learning tool. You've got a great means to learn about orchid identification. So um, I'm not going to go beyond that at this stage. I'm going to do a few videos probably over the autumn winter period to sort of help try and get you to a point where you can tell the difference between uh, a southern marsh orchid and a common spotted orchid and a grandis hybrid and some of the more basic things and i if i can help you with that as well then you should be moving pretty fast by the time we get to to the next season because this one's coming to a close now but you're not going to get there without a book in my opinion um, you're probably going to go in slightly the wrong direction if you're using an app because i think it is full of bad habits it isn't going to help you learn how to identify what an orchid is. So substitute the app with a book and learn to use uh, your smartphone to produce quality pictures because smartphones will produce fantastic quality pictures. And that's coming from a professional photographer. Right? You've just got to learn how to use it. You're the weak spot, not the camera itself. The camera is superb quality, but you've got to learn how to do it. And it's easy. It is really easy. So get a book. Learn to use your camera. You are on a roll. Uh, watch out for some more videos and uh, I'll hopefully drag you all along with me and try and get you up to a level where you really start to enjoy orchids because you can actually look at them and say, I know what that is.
right and when you get to there fun goes off the scale it's absolutely brilliant so hope to catch you in the next video and thanks for tuning in